everyone. Okay. So now that you have hopefully seen everybody, let's get started. Welcome, everybody. A uh, warm welcome to everybody watching us now. Uh, welcome to our kickoff meeting and uh, for the summer term. Uh, of course, we would have much preferred to greet you in person and welcome you in person like we usually do. So usually this is done in a lecture hall, but well, so the situation is what it is. Um, so we're trying to make the best of it. Let me briefly explain what you're seeing. I mean, obviously you're watching a YouTube stream. What we're doing is we're streaming this from a Zoom meeting. A Zoom meeting includes all the faculty and everybody who will teach a course in the summer term. And the YouTube link was sent out to all students and also to all scientific assistants. So they, some of them will also be watching now, but the event is mostly directed at students. So it's mostly intended to give you an overview of the teaching in the summer term. And of course, given the very particular circumstances of the current situation, uh, it's also intended to give you information about how things will be run in the summer term. So we get to that in detail later. Uh, before I do that, maybe let me, say, let me explain why I am talking of all the people that are present here right now. So my name is Jörg Hoffmann. I'm currently serving as the Vice Dean of the Faculty for Mathematics and Informatics. And I'm also serving as a speaker of the Department of Informatics. So this is just a role that changes uh, every two years. And what the role entails is to run the day-to-day -day business of the department and to coordinate more strategic matters. Now, what the role does not usually entail is to deal with virus outbreaks and shut down universities and teaching terms and nobody can actually be there to give the teaching or listen to the teaching. So this is just to say, the situation is about as strange to us as it is to you. Uh, nevertheless, I assure you that we're doing whatever we can to help everybody out and to make sure, to ensure it's going to be a successful summer term for all of you. And I would like to say this especially to those students who are starting with us this term and you haven't actually yet been able to actually make it here to Saarbrücken, to Saarland or even to Germany. So the situation is very strange for all of us. Uh, it must be extremely difficult for you. So we end you with this, and I assure you we're doing everything we can to help you. And one thing I can tell you right now is that we are committed to uh, teaching the entire term online. So should it possible to open, should it be possible to open a university sometime later during this term, and should we be able to have physical lectures, seminars, whatever? It doesn't seem very likely, but even if so, we're going to keep the online teaching program intact. So you will be able to follow the entire summer term online, and you will not need to be here physically until the time when you write the actual exams. Okay, uh, I'm sure you have lots of questions about uh, the teaching, how it's going to go, and how this meeting here is going to go. So let me share my slides with you. So I'm going to share the screen now. So now you see this beautiful PowerPoint presentation. <clears throat> As a little piece of meta information, I'm not a PowerPoint person uh, usually, but there will be a video here later. And uh, so I chose PowerPoint for this one time. Um, you're asking for some strange reason you're listed as the speaker in my view. Uh, ideally, the people watching on YouTube should see me now. If you see Joachim Maika, he's not speaking well, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so here's our program for today. Uh, five items. Item number one, two, and five is what we always have in this meeting here. Three and four are new. Let me briefly go through this. So I'll first just open this meeting here in my role as the speaker of the informatics department. And uh, our informatics uh, site here is one of the strongest in Germany and in Europe. And we're quite proud of that. We hope you, uh, that you're proud too to be a part of this. And I'm just going to say a few words about the site and give some views on the faculty. Then there will be an address by the student council. So they will just extend their greetings to you. And then there's the new part, uh, which will be done by Jan Reinecke, who is currently our Dean of Studies. So he is, uh, carries the main responsibility for the teaching program. And there we have tried to anticipate all the questions that you probably have and already give the answers to them. Questions of general interest, of course. So there will be a presentation on that, but we'd also like to give you the opportunity here to actually ask your own questions that get answers to them. 
So we couldn't include you all in the Zoom meeting. This wouldn't have scaled with uh, many hundreds of people in there. So we decided to instead give you the option to post your questions in the YouTube chat. We're going to be monitoring the chat. We're going to be watching it. We're going to be extracting the questions from it. And then after Jan Reinig's talk, we're going to be answering those questions here live in the meeting. Now, a few points, of course. Uh, please don't just all oh, chatting like wild. Uh, please only questions of a general interest. Right? There would be no point in, and they cannot answer questions that are specific to your personal situation or that are specific to a particular course. You should be asking questions that are of interest and not just you, but also to your fellow students. Second, of course, you might choose to spam the YouTube chat. You uh, can just say, please don't do it. You're going to hurt yourself. And more importantly, you're going to hurt your fellow students. Finally, many of you are going to have similar questions. So before you post a question, please have a look at what was already posted and don't post the same question over and over again. OK. And then when we are satisfied with the answer session, we're going to have the overview of courses uh, as always in the kickoff. So there's just a brief overview where each of the lecturers presents their course to you with one slide per course. OK, so I hope that clarifies the setup and uh, the rules to everybody. Uh, I'm going to now officially open the summer semester and this kickoff. And like I said before, we're one of the strongest sites for informatics in Germany and also in Europe. And most of us do this under the common roof of the Saarland Informatics Campus, which consists of three university departments. So there's computer science, there's mathematics, uh, who are together in this faculty. It's the Faculty of Mathematics and Computer Science or Informatics. There's also the third department for language science and technology, who are affiliated with a different faculty, but to whom we have very long standing connections. So it's been decades of collaboration and we're still cooperating extremely closely. Then there are several extremely strong research institutes on site. I'm not going to talk about all of them, but let me briefly mention some of them, especially for those of you who haven't been here yet. So there's the German Research Center for AI, the DFKI, which is actually the largest center for AI in Germany. They've got several sites in different parts of Germany, and the founding site is right here on site in Verbrücken. Then you've probably heard of the Max Planck Society. It's arguably the flagship for foundational research in Germany. They run uh, many institutes, about 100, all across Germany. Just three of those are concerned with computer science issues. And two of those three are located right here on this campus. Finally, I would briefly like to emphasize, emphasize the CISPA, which is an external partner to the Southern Informatics Campus. It's a uh, concern of information security and privacy and related issues. And it's funded by the Helmholtz uh, Society. Now the Helmholtz Society is actually the largest research society in Germany in terms of volume, in terms of funding. And they distributed funding in a very centered way. That's why it's called Helmholtz Center. They only run 19 of those centers in the whole of Germany. And one of them is here, the CISPA. So it's been founded relatively recently. It's already strong, it's gonna grow stronger in the near future. OK, so this is uh, ourselves saying how great we are. Let me show you some other people who also said something along the lines. And in particular, I would like to talk about two things that pertain to teaching. So your core interest is students. Um, the first thing is something that was called Ländercheck Informatik, done by the Stifterverband, which is a German organization. Uh, so it was done for the whole of Germany. And what you see here is quite clearly a map of Germany. What they evaluated was uh, the education in computer science. And it took into account criteria such as the number of students and the number of faculty and the amount of resources available to teach those students. Now, dark color is the best. And as you surely already seen, Saarland is one of the two states in Germany that are in the top rank here. So we're in the absolute top of Germany here. Um, furthermore, you've probably heard of the CHE ranking. It's the most reputed university ranking in Germany, uh, according to like, so far as student matters are concerned, quality of study is essentially what it focuses on. Uh, it ranks universities by a wide variety of parameters up to 34, in fact. But this here is a summary of the ranking for informatics, according to four criteria deemed to be particularly important. Uh, so they are the uh, close proximity to research, how much you are supported in your studies, in particular at the beginning of your studies, and the general study situation. 
And this uh, CHE ranking also takes information from the actual students into account. So they ask students for their opinions. Well, green is good. And as you surely already noticed, uh, we are one of the very few places in Germany that have a green mark in all four uh, criteria that are being taken into account here. So this is a great place, not only for computer science research, but also for studying computer science. Okay, now to give those of you who haven't been here yet, and maybe those of you who cannot be here right now, uh, to remind you a little of what it looks like. This is a picture of the site. Now the site is actually too big to put it in a single picture. That wouldn't make a lot of sense. So some things are not on here. The CISPA Helmholtz Center is to the right-hand side here of this picture. DFKI is to the left-hand side. Language Science and Technology Department is actually across campus. Now there's one more important building here, the Günther Holtz Lecture Hall, which is where we would actually all be right now if things were normal. So this is where we do the kickoff meeting normally under normal circumstances. It's also where we have the large lectures. Unfortunately, today we have to make do with Zoom meeting. Now, for those of you who haven't been in Saarbrücken yet, I have a special treat. We decided to include a little video of the campus here. And I'm not just gonna play this, it's not a long video. <laughs> Okay, so I hope this was a nice reminder to those of you who have been here, how nice it is here. And uh, if you haven't been here yet, I hope you're looking forward to being here, working here, living here. Um, let me get from this to the people here. So people obviously are a very important aspect. Uh, what you see here is just pictures of a faculty. Uh, obviously, it's a big faculty. I'm not going to go through all those persons now. Uh, what I am going to do uh, say a few words about some particular persons who are of particular interest in this in this term, in this particular kickoff. So one thing is the dean's office. Uh, the four of us that you see are currently running the affairs of the of the faculty. Thomas Schuster and Anselm Lambert are mathematicians. And then Jan Reinicke and me are from informatics, and that's why we're running this meeting. Now, the other people of particular interest are, of course, the ones who newly joined the faculty. So. New people joining the faculty is uh, the best thing that can happen to a faculty, obviously, bringing new research ideas, new research expertise, new teaching ideas. And so it's important that we all recognize them here. Now there's, and here we actually have one nice aspect of being in Zoom rather than the actual lecture hall, because now very conveniently, these people can briefly introduce themselves to you. So I would ask the people on the slide to introduce themselves briefly with a few words in the order listed. So Carl, if you could please uh, start this. Hey, welcome. Uh, I'm Carl Bringman. I'm a professor for algorithms and complexity since a couple of months. Uh, I know the Zabrücken uh, campus already very well because I spent the majority of the last 13 years here on campus studying like you do now doing a PhD and later after spending time abroad, I came back first to Max Planck Institute and now as a professor in the department. Hey, thank you very much, Martina, if you just wanna go ahead. All right, so hi everyone. My name is Martina Maggio and I am also one of the new faculty. Um, I come from Lund University and originally from Politecnico di Milano in Italy. And uh, like some of you, I definitely look forward to moving to Saarbrücken and being on campus. My research is at the intersection between real-time systems and control. So the use of control to make systems behave in a more predictable way. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. So Martina is actually one of those of you who haven't been able to even make it here yet. Uh, Isabel, please. So hello everyone, I'm Isabel Vareda, and I'm also a new faculty at the department. I am not yet in 
in Saarbrücken, unfortunately, but still in Tübingen, where I have been for the last couple of years at the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems. And my research is about machine learning and in particular, statistical machine learning for real world data and to solve real world problems. And I'm looking forward to meet you all in person. Okay, thank you very much. Um, now, this was the first slide on new faculty. There's actually a second slide. So there's a second slide and these are faculty of a slightly different, of a different group. So the matter of fact is we are all cooperating very closely here on site, not just the university, but also the different institutes. And one way this cooperation is instantiated is by joint professorships. So there are people whose main affiliation is outside the department, but who are nevertheless members of a faculty. And there were two new members of this group in the last term. And now I would like them to present themselves individually. Unfortunately, Mario Fritz told me just five minutes before this meeting here we can, uh, began that he can't make it. There was something else that blocked him. So uh, he can't uh, present himself to you here. Uh, I can tell you that he was previously at Max Planck Institute in Bernd Schiele's group. And he has now been appointed a member of the faculty at uh, the CISPA Center. So let's welcome Mario Fritz to our faculty. And then Alexander, please uh, say a few words about yourself. Yeah, hello. My name is Alexander Koller. I um, have been a professor of computational linguistics in the Department of Language Science and Technology since 2016 and just became a co-opted professor of computer science, so, so computer science professor by courtesy. Um, my research is on uh, computational methods for understanding and generating language and for making dialogue systems that you can talk to and that will talk back at you. Um, uh, and I really look forward to uh, cooperating and in a later semester teaching you guys. Okay, thank you very much, Alexander. Now there is even a third slide on new faculty. So we've been growing quite strongly in the last term. And as before, please, Deepak and Nilas, can you just say a few words about yourselves? Yeah, so I am Deepak Gurk. I work in computer security, formal logic, and programming languages. So primarily topics like type theory, proof theory, applications of programming languages to computer security, and also in many cases, building secure and private systems. Thanks. Thank you. Yilis? Yeah, so my name is Yilis Vreke. Um, you might already know my face, given that I've been walking around campus for seven years. Uh, I've been affiliated with the Cluster of Excellence on MMCI. I'm affiliated still with the Max Planck Institute for Informatics, but the main affiliation is with the CISPA Helmholtz Center for Information Security. And while having been affiliated with all these places, my main topic of research is exploratory data analysis, which is the most non hypey way to describe data mining, machine learning, uh, big data and all these things. The main goal of my research and my group is to develop theory and methods. How can we as humans learn from data and about the process that generated the data? So that involves statistics, algorithms, statistics about algorithms, algorithms that compute statistics and well, all that jazz. So very pleased to be here. Okay, thank you very much. Good. So there's no fourth slide on new faculty. This concludes this section. Uh, we now come to the second best thing that can happen to a faculty after new people joining, namely awards. So this is the list of awards. It is only the important awards. Now, of course, every award is important, but for example, best paper was on the list here. So it's just like the big important ones. Um, now, as I said before, it's a great place here and we have so many of even of the big important awards that we can actually present an entire list of them to you each term. So in those follows, I'm going to uh, briefly explain and present those awards. Our first award is Professor Reinhard Wilhelm, who has been given a test of time award from the Embedded Systems Week. So the Embedded Systems Week is the most important yearly event that's a conference covering uh, topics around embedded systems. And the Test of Time Award is uh, awarded to uh, research that has had a particularly strong impact on science uh, and on applications. And this particular research here was originally published in 2001, so 19 years ago now. Now, some of you are watching the YouTube stream now, 
um, might think that 19 years is a really long time. And uh, well, it is. And some of you were probably not even born yet in 2001. But if you think about it a bit, uh, long-term impact really is what science is about. So for illustration, maybe consider physics for a moment. Uh, some of those results that we all know are centuries old and they're still important today. So this is why time really puts the test to science. So I'd like to congratulate Professor Willem on this great award. Our second award is uh, not any less prestigious. It's an ERC starting grant. The ERC is the European Research Commission and uh, they're giving grants, which also come with a lot of funding. And those grants more and more become the, the absolute European and also more and more international signal for research excellence. So this is like the highest recognition for research excellence that you can get at the European level at this time. And uh, Professor Karl Brinkmann received that honor. So uh, congratulations to you, Karl. Uh, another great honor in science is uh, honorary doctoral degrees. So these are given to uh, distinguished scientists for lifetime achievements and for contributions to science and also society. And one of those like honorary doctoral degrees was awarded to Professor Walster last term by the Technical University of Prague. Um, I might mention that this, uh, that this is already the fourth honorary doctoral de degree that has been awarded to Professor Walster. So congratulations. With this, I'm getting to two awards that are to particular interests of the students watching. I mean, of course, it's in your genuine interest to have high quality of teaching and there are teaching awards too. This one here is a particularly exciting one. It's given out by the Stifterverband. So we've uh, talked of the Stifterverband from before. It's a Germany-wide organization, meaning in particular that this award here is a Germany-wide award. The award is named Hochschulperle, which uh, translates to something like Pearl of Universities. It's an award that's been given to particularly innovative and bold teaching programs. Now they give out this award every month but they also select an award for the best teaching program of the year. And that award for the year 2019 went to Ethics for Nerds, run by Kevin Baum, Sarah Sterz, and Holger Hermanns. So congratulations to you all. Uh, Holger told me to especially emphasize the contribution of Kevin and Sarah, who really ran this program and who really earned this award for themselves. Okay, now as a joke on the side, you might have noticed that Holger is wearing a strange cap. It's something he uh, likes to do. If you, in case you could read it on your screen, here you have a more readable version of it. Okay, just an aside, let's get to the next award. And this is the last one I'll be talking about, the Landespreis Hochschullehre. So this is the, the prize of Saarland for outstanding um, university teaching. It's also given to innovative and important teaching programs. And uh, it was given to Entrepreneurial Cybersecurity uh, by Andreas Zeller and Bernd Finkbeiner. So congratulations to Andreas and Bernd. Uh, to say a few words about it, this is actually a mixture. So half of it is cybersecurity studies, so computer science lectures, as usual, you might say. The other half is actually a group of students working on a startup project. And also the master's thesis are written about topics related to the startup project. So it's an exciting course of study, I think, and uh, the award attests to that. Good. This brings me to pretty much the end of my little uh, introduction here. Uh, just a few more words. Um, what you see here is the list of study programs that you have here. So all the courses of study you can choose from. Uh, obviously, it's a long list. I can also tell you from my personal experience, I mean, I've studied somewhere else and I've been in various other places. And the teaching program here is just amazing not just in terms of the breadth, but also in terms of the debt, and also in terms of the efforts everybody makes to provide good teaching quality. It's absolutely amazing. Consider yourselves lucky that you're studying here. Now, being spoiled for choice, of course, also means you might have a lot of questions regarding what fits best for you. That's natural. And naturally, many of the answers you're seeking can be found on our web page, and we're also active in social media. So these are things you can look at. You can go to in case of questions. Now, of course, you might have more specific questions that are not immediately answered there. And for that, you can go to contact points. And this is actually an important aspect of having this meeting now. There's still an, an entire week left before the courses start. And so you have an entire week to clarify any specific questions you might have. And the contact information for this will be given in Jan, Jan Reinecke's presentation. 
And that's it from my side. I wish you a successful summer term. Uh, I also wish you a fun summer term so far as possible. And good luck to all of you. And I'm going to stop sharing now. All right, then I think it's my turn now from the Students' Council. Um, just a moment, please. I hope it's visible to all of you as well. And um, yeah, a warm welcome from us to Students' Council in this most unusual semester that we probably ever had and will have within the next few years, hopefully. At, at least I wish it was this way or it will be this way. Um, yeah, hi, I'm Niels. I'm from the Computer Science Students Representative Council. A very long name, but um, you just basically need to know we want to try to help you. And for this, we just added a small presentation uh, where you get most of the information from. Um, otherwise known as the Fachschaftsrat Informatikstudiengänge, we are responsible um, for everything that concerns you in the way that you can always come to us. We are um, elected members. So you, the students, elect us for this position and we will then in our position uh, talk to professors, talk to certain committees and um, will in our own way try to help you achieve, um, if you have achieve something if you should have a problem with someone you will try to mediate etc so we would like to help with every problem that that you have um otherwise w uh, in a while later some some slides later we will um additionally add some or show you some ways in which we will help you additionally um yeah, normally we would have an introductory lecture or an introductory week um, as well. Some of you or most of you should probably already have been at one of our um, meetings since, since most of you are probably older students and the newest ones that have joined this semester are not currently here. But still, for the ones that have joined this new this semester as new students, maybe the masters or the bachelors, um, here is a short introduction. Uh, introduction: Who we are? Um, yeah. Here are our fifteen elected members. The fifteen the elected members that are, that are currently in the Zoom meeting. You might just say hello and wave in your camera if you're there. Hello. Hi. Hello. There's one. Ah, maybe not all of them are seen, but I think there are three or four currently in the Zoom meeting. Um, yeah. Remember these faces. These are the faces that you can always talk to. Um, we have a big part of us are computer science majors. May it be um, in the masters or the bachelors. Um, there, but we also also have one person who is um, in his master's in media informatics and one who is in, in her master's in visual computing. Um, in this way, you can always, once this is all over, you can always come to us, you can write us an email, whatever, and we will be sure to help you and uh, offer our guidance on anything that you don't may not know and help you with our connections in the faculty. Um, but not only are there the elected members, there are many other members that are volunteer members. They might be old members um, or people that just are not able to come into the students council like our mathematics and computer science friends. Um, they, are, they cannot be voted into the um, students council, but they are still sure to help you um, if there are any questions from your side on the mathematics and computer science uh, lectures and study program. Otherwise, these people as well are some people that you always can talk to um, if you happen to have any questions. Sadly, now would be the part um, where we bestow our greatest honor from the Students' Council, our Busy Beaver Award. We always give out the Busy Beaver Award for the most aus outstanding lectures of the last semester um, in three different categories, our semester uh, seminars, the first category, the second category are um, basic lectures like PROC 1 and PROC 2 and the other ones. 
and the last one are core lectures, um, yeah, and advanced lectures. These are all the, the, the third and fourth are both in the same category. Um, sadly, we won't be able to bestow this honor due to the current circumstances, but we will make sure to um, let the people know we have won it as soon as possible, as soon as everything is evaluated. And the gift baskets, so all the people that have won have gotten a, a gift basket from us, and they will be sure to get one as well, and we will um, give them out the next time that we are able to meet, so ho hopefully in the next introductory lecture within half a year. But all of the professors or lecturers, better to be said, um, that won our honor of Busy Beaver um, will know about it and we, make, uh, and we will publish it definitely so that it can be used wherever and whenever you want. All right, but that's just us. Let me talk to you briefly about what we can do for you as the Students' Council. We have some old exams. This might not only be old exams, but mostly it will be uh, thought protocols of old exams. So if you have some questions concerning them or if you have a problem and may not know which tasks there might be in a lecture, in, in an exam, you can always come ask us. We have some from the last years. They are not definitely not, we don't have all of them. We have some. Um, we hope that we can give you some hints on what might take place within the lecture. We hope that you we can give you some pointers on what you should learn. Um, but this is of course not, um, we cannot say that we have all of it or that we know everything as well as um, that the lecturers of course um, partly remove some some tasks and add some other, other um, exercises. So yeah. We can just give you a hint on what might be there. Um, additionally on this, just come by or uh, write us an email and we will try to help you on any questions you have uh, concerning old exams. Furthermore, there's our student printer. It is of course not currently the most important for you since it is um, necessary that you are at the university to use it. But for every new person that hasn't heard of it, we give you 100 free copies per month per person. So yeah, uh, so you are available to simply go about and uh, print out something that you need in this month. Um, and furthermore, we help you print your thesis and we will subsidize your thesis depending on bachelor's or master's with two or four euros respectively. So just go ahead and come to us. What is most important in this time is probably that you know everything that we do or that you can reach us as the students council since we are there to um, answer basically all of your questions that are concerning your life as a student uh, as a student at the university and at the faculty um, we have for this we have multiple mailing lists but a little bit more on that later on um, or in the next point our mailing lists are basically our events announcements so um, our jobs where you can find research assistant positions and other jobs that will be given to us by some um, by other universities by some um, enterprises entrepreneurs that are looking for student workers in in Germany or even in Saarland as well and of course there's a public uh, public discussion list of the students council where we, we will also publish our meeting minutes for the meeting minutes um, we are of course, having conditionally, or we are still having meetings continually through the weeks then of this pandemic. Um, there will be a meeting each week and we will announce it on the FSR at cs.fs.uni-saarland.de mailing list. So please subscribe to it and um, you will then find every, every information that you need to get from us um, on this mailing list. How can you join these mailing lists? Simply go to our website, you will get a QR code um, on one of the later slides, um, which is a shortcut to our website, um, where you then can find every information that you're looking for, um, as well as all the mailing lists, as well as the possibility or the giving you the possibility to subscribe our mailing list. 
to, to subscribe to our mailing lists. Um, and last but not least, we as the Students' Council um, are sympathetic ear for you. So any problem that you have, may it be with another student, may it be with the faculty, may it be with whomever, you can always come talk to us and we will want to help you uh, resolve your problems. This is, this is concerning especially the study problems. So if you have some questions concerning your um, how to approach your studies or how to go about your life as a student at university, please come ask us. But we can also help you as well for orientation problems. If you don't know who to speak to, we will help you. If you don't um, know what to do in a certain situation, we will help you. For this, you can always find the members um, on our website as well. There you will find an email for every member that you then can write to. If you think this um, person looks nice or trustworthy, you can always write them personally. Otherwise, in this current situation, since not all of you want to write um, an email to a certain person or whatever, we give you the possibility to use our mail and our telegram. So on telegram, we create the bot, which is called the Rindfi bot, which will be found on the website as well. Just write a ticket to it and you will get, um, and we will get a ticket and answer you as soon as possible. The same counts for the, um, for the mail help at cs.fs. Um, just go ahead, write an email to it. You, we will create a, a ticket out of it and you will then get an answer as soon as possible from a person that can actually help you. Last but not least, on this sympathetic ear, we are not tutors. Some of, some of us have been, some of us will be, um, but we cannot guarantee that for every lecture there will be a tutor within our midst. So um, we might be able to help you with some, con some questions concerning um, computer science questions, but we cannot guarantee that every question will be answered by us. Um, and with this, I will give <laughs> the talk over to Elena. Yes, uh, hello from me as well. I come to the more, let's say, fun part of studying, um, which are actually not studying, but doing events. So um, we from the Student Council also want to make sure that you actually enjoy your studies and you're not just learning, but actually also get to know each other. And therefore we have a couple of events which we do on a regular basis, for example, some breakfast or summer barbecue in the summer semester or a winter party in the winter semester and we do pub crawls or board game nights. Unfortunately, due to the corona situations, it is a bit hard at the moment, but hard doesn't mean impossible. So we're working on that. And we created an online board game night using Discord. So we will make events there, um, have regular board game nights during the semester. So you can all meet up online, get to know each other, um, get to know other students, and hopefully uh, you'll enjoy these events as much as the others. And we're already looking forward to meet you hopefully next semester in person again. And talking about meeting, um, where do you find us? Um, this is the way when you enter um, E31, um, you just follow through. We sort of above the eye coffee um which you should get to know as soon as you're there it's really nice to go there for coffee and um, we're just on top of them having a big sign out of out in front of our door so feel free to come and see us there but as long as the uni closed closed um here are all our details um so you can contact us through the website where you will find all other links so that's the most important link you should remember but as you can see, we have Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Telegram, and Discord. So whichever way you would like, feel free, contact us, ask us questions, and yeah, get in contact with us. And now we've got the promised QR code, which you can scan to go to our website, where we also created a um, semester starting box where you can download um, the most important information we collected. So you can start really easily and smooth into your semester. 
you get all details you need for that um and also have like a really quick link to all our contact sites but yeah maybe scan the qr code now but go on that website later otherwise we get trouble for taking you away from the youtube stream so yeah that's all from us thank you and we hope to see you soon and meet you in our discord online board game nights <laughs> bye bye All right, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, this is Jan Reinecke. As uh, our uh, vice dean mentioned, I'm uh, serving as the dean of studies uh, starting this term. And due to the, um, well, um, unfortunate circumstances that we're all in, uh, of course, there are many consequences uh, for the teaching in the summer term. So I thought I would fill you into the most important aspects. And of of course, if you have questions, please uh, post them in the YouTube uh, chat. So the first question uh, that some people had is regarding the semester dates, right? So I think everybody has heard that uh, the semester, the start of the semester has been postponed and the semester will actually commence May 4th. Uh, and this has been postponed from April 6th. So, but while the start of the semester has been postponed, the course is still end July 17 as originally planned, right? And of course, uh, as a consequence, the summer term's length is reduced and uh, we, we would like to make sure and the lecturers should take, take this into account that it's still manageable, uh, you know, to, uh, to take the courses and it might not be possible for all courses to cover all the material that they have been teaching in a regular term. Okay, something that we also know uh, at this point is that the winter term will commence only November 1st, right? So what we don't know yet is when the winter term will end and what the uh, effect of this is going to be in the coming terms. This is something we don't know yet, but we do know that courses will only start in November on November 1st, which means that we have a little more time to carry out exams and re-exams during the break between the two terms. Okay, before we get to the exams, let's uh, talk about the teaching modalities for a little while. So first of all, uh, unfortunately, uh, we won't be able to carry out the exams on site, uh, at least not in the coming weeks, right? So we don't know whether anything will change up until the end of the term, but uh, we do not anticipate that this will be the case. Now, uh, as a consequence, all courses will be carried out online uh, through different means. Um, the good news is that you will still find the full range of courses, right? So there's no reduction of the number or the types of courses compared with a regular term. Now, all courses can be found in the LSF and many of the courses will be presented later on in the in the round where we go through the lecturers presenting their uh, individual uh, courses. Uh, we restricted this uh, presentation that we, we will see later to those courses where the lecturer is personally able to present his course. That's why it's not 100% uh, complete. Okay, how will teaching look like in this uh, special situation? Now this will uh, be different in different courses. So different courses will adopt different teaching styles. Um, some will offer live online lectures. Others will record lectures that are then available for streaming or for download. Um, in addition, there will be online tutorials. There will be online office hours. We will of course make use of forums, of chat rooms, etc. cetera. Um, Finally, I mean, this is uh, the decision of the individual instructor, which uh, of these modalities is uh, sort of deemed the most useful for his course. Platforms. Um, so as you can see, we're using Zoom here. Zoom will be one platform that will be used. Another one will be Microsoft Teams. So the university has acquired uh, Microsoft Teams licenses for the whole campus, so everybody can log into that. And in addition to that, there are a number of smaller platforms that have been deployed in the departments, such as Big Blue Button, Rocket Chat, and a lot of other things. Now, 
um, for a particular course, um, you should you know, consult the website of that particular course to find out more information about uh, how it will be conducted. Okay, international students and actually beyond, um, uh, we are well aware that uh, not everybody will even be able to come uh, to our campus in the foreseeable future, right? And um, so one thing I can tell you is that your physical presence on campus will not be required prior to any exams. So even uh, in the rather unlikely case that the campus will reopen, uh, we have a commitment of all lecturers to enable online participation throughout the term um, so that you don't need to be here in order to finish uh, whatever courses you are taking. And of course, uh, this, this doesn't only apply to international students, but also German students who might not be in Saarbrücken at the moment. Exam dates. So uh, many of you might know that there's still um, some re-exams from the winter term that have not yet been carried out, right? And so these uh, we will have to schedule in addition to the exams that will be undertaken for the summer term. And in order to make this doable, um, we decided to introduce these four phases for exam dates. So the first phase, as usual, will consist of end of term exams for the summer term. This is immediately following the lecture period in the summer term. Then uh, there will be a break. Uh, and starting from September 21st to October 9th, there will be re-exams for the summer term, excluding the basic courses. We're excluding the basic courses here because the software practicum, which is a mandatory course for undergraduates, is taking place until October 8th. And so uh, in order to avoid any conflicts with that, we decided that re-exams for basic courses from the summer term will be scheduled in the week from October 12th to 16th. And following that, there will be the remaining re-exams for the winter term. So this is for the 2019-2020 winter term. Now, of course, with, uh, as with most uh, rules, there will be exceptions. And uh, this is the case here as well, right? So exceptions are possible where there are good reasons for that. So one example of that is going to be the programming two course, um, which is a prerequisite for the software practicum. And in order to enable people to take the re-exam before the software practicum, their re-exam will not fall into the uh, slot that is assigned here. Now, again, detailed information can be found on the respective course website. Okay, how are exams actually going to be carried out? Um, of course, at this point, uh, for the exams that will happen in July or August or September, um, we don't know for sure what the rules are going to be. At this point, um, I can tell you the following. So first of all, written exams on campus are possible, even today. Um, the university will ensure sufficient space and hygiene me measures will be adopted. Um, of course, social distancing, distancing rules apply and participants are requested to wear face masks when uh, entering and leaving. And it's still uh, to be determined whether face masks will also be mandatory while taking the exam. Um, in addition to written exams, of course, online oral exams are also possible and some of these have already been conducted. So this is possible in particular for small courses if there are some outstanding oral exams that might be a possibility uh, to carry them out quickly. Another topic are exam inspections. So exam inspections are typically also conducted on site and this is also possible uh, but the same rules apply as for written exams. Uh, so participants are requested to wear face masks and sufficient space uh, will have to be provided and will be provided. Okay, so this was a brief overview of the information that, uh, you know, is particular to uh, our department. Um, now, of course, the situation is quite dynamic and um, new information is coming in every day and some information uh, applies to the university as a whole. 
And there is a website that, that is sort of gathering all this information centrally at the university. And you can find it at the link that is provided on this slide. In addition to that, um, we also collect the information that is particular to the Saarland Informatics campus. And you can find it uh, following this URL, which is also linked on the main uh, Saarland Informatics campus website. Okay, this was my brief overview of the consequences of the, the Corona crisis on our teaching in this term. And so this brings us to the questions and, and answers part. And uh, in this phase, we will consider all the questions that have been asked in the meantime during the YouTube chat. So I'm going to stop the sharing and we can have a look at the questions together. Okay, um, so uh, Jörg, can you, uh, can you let us know about uh, some of the questions that have been posed? Okay, sure. So um, we essentially picked out the questions that were of a general interest. Most of them actually were. Uh, one question is, what will happen to the seminars? I suppose the answer is they will be taught online along with the rest of the courses. Okay, then there's the next question, which I can answer. Mm -hmm. So the question was, uh, I read somewhere, the winter semester will start one month later. If that's true, will this delay transfer to all coming semesters? Um, okay, so first, uh, it's true that the winter term starts later. That's first of November. So two weeks later, actually. And regarding the coming semesters, uh, as of now, we don't know. And this is a decision made by politics, not by us. All I can say, we will keep you informed as we uh, know more about how things will develop later on. Okay, let me take the next question. So uh, some students are in their final phase. And so they might have taken uh, the final courses for their program, but they haven't re gotten the results, uh, particularly because re-exams might still have to take place. Um, so uh, now the question is how should those, what should those students do? Um, in that case, uh, if, if this is really one of the last courses that you're taking, uh, I think it would be reasonable for us to offer individual earlier examinations, right? So in that case, uh, please get in touch with the respective instructor and I think we should find a solution for those cases. Okay, another question from the chat was, uh, what about the exams? Are they going to be easier since many would agree that there is a qualitative difference between online only lectures and normal lectures and tutorials? Um, so this is uh, of course, uh, well, again, depending on the particular course, um, we hope that we can uh, offer um, courses at the same quality as in a regular term, uh, but uh, of course the lecturers will have to take into account the particular uh, circumstances that we're in today. Okay, question number five on our list, I think. Yes, this was number five. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, there are so many questions in chat. <laughs> yes. So is Erich uh, Reinl actually on the Zoom chat? No. Here? Ah. Yeah, so there has been a question regarding the uh, library and whether it would be possible to pick up books from the library um, for the semester. Okay, yes. Yes, I'm just discussing this with Simone. Uh, we have to wait until the library has been cleaned and disinfected. And that should happen uh, this week or at the beginning of next week. Yes. And we are planning that students can have access to the books. They have, should register uh, before this via email and we can make an appointment, but we plan to have about two time slots a week where students can come and can get access to the books. And details will follow in a few days. There, there is some other information maybe that I can just add is we 
ordered a lot of the teaching books, the textbooks, um, as online books, so they can actually be read online. Um, so this is not for all of our teaching books, but for quite a few of them. So again, you should find information on that on the library webpage. Mm -hmm. So there was another question about thesis submission. And um, the short answer to thesis submission is that uh, digital thesis submission is possible now. So you don't need to turn in a physical copy of your thesis by snail mail, but it's possible to just send it in via email. Are there any uh, free seminar places left? So uh, the answer is that there are still a very few number of slots available for ad hoc uh, admission, right? So we've had our um, assignment of seminar slots uh, this uh, past weekend. Um, and due to a mismatch between what students were interested in and what was offered, there are still a few slots. If you log into the central uh, seminar assignment system, you can see which seminars still have uh, some slots available and you may contact the instructors of those seminars if they would like, if they would admit you. Okay, there's the question whether the enrollment date for the winter term is affected by the delay. Tanya, are you here? Yes, I am. So um, this is a decision of the admissions office of the university. We will try to postpone the enrollment deadline for one or two weeks, but we have to wait for the final decision and then we will give the information um, via our Saarland Informatics campus website and inform the admitted students. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Um... Okay, so here's was a good question. Okay, so there was a question uh, about midterm exams. So we told you that you won't have to be here physically until the exams at the end of term, by which time the situation has hopefully, hopefully cleared up a bit. Uh, there was a question how midterm exams will be handled. Um, well, first of all, it is an exam, so uh, the same conditions apply. Um, now, to a large degree, this isn't the responsibility of the individual lecturers uh, organizing the course. So they need to organize a way in which you can participate in a midterm exam or get the qualification that allows you to participate the exam in the end. So if you have a question of this sort, I would suggest you contact the lecturers of your course directly. Maybe I can comment briefly on this. So there's a difference between an exam, which is, as such is concluding the course, and this can in some circumstances be the midterm, or whether the midterm is just giving you admission to the final exam. If the midterm is giving you admission to the final, final exam, then uh, it is not to be treated like an exam where you have to be present, I think, and there should be other ways of getting to the final exam. While if it is one that is concluding the, the module or a part of the module in a formal sense, then it is an exam in the sense that there sh you sh should find a way to be present or get in touch with the, with the lecturer. Okay, uh, another question was whether anything is planned yet for the uh, preparatory course in mathematics. Uh, honestly, I don't know the answer to that. Does somebody here know? Me neither. Nothing has been planned. Okay, I mean, as of now, the situation is just too volatile and we, we can't look that far ahead, really. We don't know yet what's gonna happen. Okay, somebody raised a concern about Zoom considering the controversies around this tool. The answer is to, the, to this is yes, and this is why we also have alternatives and it's in the responsibility and judgment of the individual lecturers to decide what is best for their course. And we might add Zoom can also be consumed in a web page. Um, so you don't have to install the Zoom client. You can just use the web for that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Another question, do we have online German language classes? So uh, does somebody know this for sure? So I can comment on the ones offered normally by the Max Planck Institute for Informatics. We don't offer any courses this term because a language course cannot as easily be adapted to an online format as other courses might be because learning language also consists of personal interaction and, and many more than just um, talking to each other. Okay, thank you. Okay, another question was about uh, what about students who cannot enter Germany right now? Can they take the exams online somehow? Uh, this is a difficult question to answer at this point. Um, so uh, we are still working on finalizing or finding a good answer for this. It does not seem to be possible to do exams entirely online at this point. Um, one possibility that uh, may materialize is that students who cannot come for the end of term exams in July or early August might be able to take their first exam during the re-exam slot, which is going to happen end of September or October, which might give more students the ability to come to campus and take the exams there. Um, how to deal with students that won't be able at all to come to campus, we would still have to determine. Okay, in exceptional cases, it might also be possible to arrange uh, an oral exam online with your lecturer, but this is individual and has to be agreed with the lecturer. Um, okay, what do we have? What about sport classes, someone asked. Uh, to my knowledge, they are being put on hold right now, so they're just not happening. Does somebody else have uh, knowledge on that? Okay. Um, so one question, one easy question was, is it possible to start working on a master's or bachelor thesis right now? And the answer is yes, definitely. Just be in touch with your supervisor and clarify things with him or her. Then there's a question raised by several people in different variants. So there are people who have trouble because they're not registered yet uh, or that they're still uh, not in Germany and uh, they, they, had, they had trouble registering and they lacked the, the, the IDs and the details to be able to enroll for the courses and so on and so forth. Tanya, do you want to comment on this? Uh -huh. The best way is to send us an email because these are individual problems. So please send an email to the study coordination and then we can try to help. Yeah, it's a question whether it's in problems to be enrolled, difficulties with the enrollment process or enrollment to classes. So it would be better to send us an email. Okay, so these are questions to be uh, uh, answered individually. And Tanya here is your contact partner for this. And her contact information was on Jan's slides. The slides will be put online after this. So you can always look up the contact information there. Okay. Uh, somebody asked if the crisis is still ongoing in the fall, will we organize the exams then? And the truthful answer to this is we really can know for now we foresee that we can hold written exams at that time, giving sufficient space and sufficient hygienic measures, but for sure we cannot tell. So we're going to have to wait how the situation develops. Well, legally speaking, we can hold them already now, right? We are allowed to hold exams already now. This is, and assuming that things get better, I mean, there's some hope. Yes, sure, but maybe things get worse again. And this was just what I meant to say. We, we don't really know what the situation would be like in fall, but yes, it's true. And some small exams will actually are scheduled to be written next week already and in very big rooms where there's enough space between students. Okay. Do we have information about student ID cards, for example, uh, if they can be revalidated, if they're still valid for public transport? I mean, it's not really the responsibility of this faculty. Uh, I mean, we can try to find the answer somewhere, but please try to get in touch with the uh, 
uh, responsible um, persons at uh, for the university as a whole. Okay, then uh, there was a question that's probably already been answered. Is the information on exams from the winter term that haven't been written yet? And the answer to this is they have been rescheduled to a particular exam phase in the fall. Uh, I don't have the dates in my head right now, Jan, they're on your slides. Do you remember? Um, I would have to look it up in detail, but this phase is, if I'm not mistaken, from October 19 to October 31st. That re-exams for the winter term should be uh, conducted. Yes, and there are some exceptions to this. So I believe the exams that will be written next week are re-exams on the winter term. Okay, which is sometimes more advantageous. If it's not many people, it's better to just get it done now. Okay, somebody posted in the YouTube chat that the cards can be used for public transport until the end of May, a student. So uh, uh, I can't confirm this information, but this is what's been posted. Okay, this seems to be the end. Here's one question that I'm not sure I fully understand. Is mandatory attendance in the summer term permitted for online lecture seminars? My understanding to this is that it's going to be handled like always. We don't count your heads when you enter a lecture hall. And other than that, it's, it's going to be an individual decision of the lecturer. OK, so this is all uh, I found. Unless somebody else found something else, I would say we uh, proceed. All right. Um, so yes, let's move on to the uh, presentation of the courses for the summer term. Let me share the slides for that. Can you see the slides? All right, so we will go in the alphabetic order of the instructors. And the first instructor is Markus Bläser. Markus, can you tell us about your course? Okay, so this course is called Geometric Complexity Theory. And um, so maybe some of you want to make a fortune by doing machine learning, but most of you, I guess, want to prove that P does not equal NP. And uh, this is what this course is about. Um, so there's a reasoned, uh, reasoned approach by Momoli and Sihoni who want to use algebraic geometry and representation theoretic methods to attack uh, proving this lower bounds and assess. And um, I will introduce you very gently to this method and we will learn all the math. Um, it's important that you should like math if you want to take this course. We will start from scratch. So basic undergraduate mathematics. Uh, so basic um, undergraduate level uh, of a computer science mathematics is sufficient. So Mathematica, Mathematik für Informatica 1 plus 3 or something else in your undergraduate program. It will be a specialized lecture. It's a big lecture. So we'll meet twice a week. Um, all the information is on the website and there will be a first Zoom meeting um, Monday at 11 on May 4th. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Markus. Uh, next up is Karl Bringmann. Yeah, so this course is about sublinear algorithms. So imagine that you want to uh, test how, how, what percentage of a population is infected by a certain virus. <laughs> then certainly you do not test every single individual of your population, but you do a randomized trial. You check for a random, uh, a random subset of your population how many are infected. This gives you a good estimate by the law of large numbers or certain concentration inequalities. Now, uh, this is the simplest example of an algorithm that I know that runs in sublinear time that does not test uh, every input individual. Uh, and in this course, we will mo look more generally at um, what are sublinear algorithms, so algorithms that have a sublinear resource requirement, like a running time that is less than the input size, which leads to property testing, or a space requirement that is sublinear. Then we will look into streaming algorithms or a number of measurements that is sublinear, like in the example. Uh, this, this is the right course for you if you uh, attended algorithms and data structures and like this and want to intensify this. Uh, the formal requirement is just one basic course on algorithms and data, stru and data structures, like this Grundzüge von Algorithmen and Data Struktur. Lectures every Thursday, four to six, tutorial Monday, four to six. Um, you should register 
uh, website, which is linked on this slide. And see. All right, thank you. So this term, uh, as an exception, we're also presenting some of the basic courses, and Jens Dietrich is uh, presenting Big Data Engineering. Ja, hallo, das ist Big Data Engineering, Formats und Informationssysteme. Wir haben den Kurs letztes Sommersemester komplett neu gemacht. Und ich erzähle Ihnen was über Segeln. Äh, was ist Wind? Äh, wie sorgt Wind dafür, dass man mit, äh, mit Fahrzeugen mit dem Wind fahren kann? Also wir fangen einmal einfach einfach Jollen. Also der Hintergrund dieser Analogie ist, es gibt verschiedene Systeme, mit denen man Daten organisieren und Daten anfragen kann. Die sprechen alle dieselbe Sprache, die heißt SQL, haben aber völlig unterschiedliche Eigenschaften. Und wir fangen diesen Kurs an mit einfachen Jollen. Wie steigt man auf eine Jolle auf? Was passiert, wenn sie ins Wasser fallen? Wie steigt man wieder auf? Wie macht man, sorgt man dafür, dass man wieder trocken wird? Äh, wir gucken uns ähm, auch weiterführende Systeme an, also vergleichbar Motorboote. Es gibt dann weiterführende Vorlesungen. Im Winter erkläre ich das dann. Da geht es bis hin zu Systemen, die, sagen wir mal, 20-fache Lichtgeschwindigkeit durch irgendwelche Wurmlöcher fliegen. Aber das machen wir nicht hier. Hier geht es um wirklich ganz einfache äh, Fahrzeuge für die Datenverarbeitung. Und das Grundlegende, was ich Ihnen beibringen möchte, ist grundlegende Techniken im Bereich Big Data Engineering, also zum einen konzeptuell, aber auch wie wendet man das an. Dann als zweites insbesondere, wie sorgt man dafür, dass man das Rad nicht neu erfindet. Das passiert leider sehr oft, wenn es um Datenmanagement geht, dass ganz seltsame Sachen gemacht werden, die man eigentlich gar nicht machen müsste. Es geht Dinge viel einfacher. Ich möchte Sie auch ein bisschen für Probleme, wichtige Anwendungen sensibilisieren, Stichwort Big Data. Da kann man extremen Informationsgewinn bekommen, wenn man die richtigen Anfragen stellt. Das ist manchmal sehr überraschend, was da passiert. Das führt dann auch zu Fragestellungen der Deanonymisierung und ethischen Fragestellungen. Da gucken wir ein bisschen hin. Und ich werde Sie für Lösungen wichtiger Anwendungen sensibilisieren, also gerade was Aufwand, Performance, Robustheit und so weiter angeht. Die Vorlesung geht los nächste Woche Dienstag. Wir haben aber jetzt am Donnerstag um 10.15 Uhr schon eine Testvorlesung, wo ich ein bisschen was über das Administrative erzähle. Ja, ich freue mich, Sie zu sehen. Bis dann. Tschüss. Okay, thank you, Jens. Uh, now we're getting a, a peek into the cryptography lecture. Nico Döttling, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, everyone. So what used to be an ancient secret art is now the technology that powers the internet and blockchains. And in this course, we'll start with the humble beginnings of the field and see how cryptography turned into a actual scientific dis discipline in the second half of the 20th century. So today, cryptography is far more than ciphers or encryption. In fact, modern cryptography is concerned with design of systems which need to withstand advers any adversarial abuse. So the start of this course is Monday next week. But for those who are really interested, we've already put some material online and uh, um, take your question in the online office hour on this Thursday. So yeah, uh, love, to th love to see you. Thanks. Great, thanks. Now we come to constructive theory of computation. Uh, that is going to be uh, well conducted by Andre Duden, if not. Uh, yes, uh, this course is an advanced course. It will be about, uh, on the one hand, uh, traditional computability theory. So we'll be taking a historic, historic perspective on the question, what is computable? And in fact, not everything is computable. We will show theoretical limitations and consequences of it. Uh, they are quite different. Um, models of computation and we will be inspecting the most important historic ones and then uh, in the second part of the course we'll we'll be uh, looking at the modern perspective on computability theory in the sense that we will use functional programs we will use type theory and in particular we'll be using the cock proof assistant to uh, inspect problems to show undecidability results uh, in a much more modern and hands-on setting. Uh, so overall, this course is for those people who are either interested in the theoretical aspects of computability theory and what is computable, uh, and also for those people who just do like programming in COC and proving theorems in COC, uh, that will be a practical part of the course. So thank you. All right, thank you.
computer vision and machine learning for computer graphics. Uh, Mohammed. Yes, hi. Uh, yeah, hello, hello everyone. So I'm Mohammed from the Max Planck Informatics. And uh, I'll briefly talk about our seminar, computer vision and machine learning for computer graphics. So uh, computer vision is the process of analyzing and uh, understanding images and videos. Computer graphics is the process of rendering 3D objects in the 2D space and to be able to interact with, with them. And machine learning is the process of training computers to be able to do uh, tasks in, a, in, a, in an automated form. So our course deals with all those three components and this usually requires a very strong understanding of the objects intrinsic components of geometry and color and being able to manipulate them in a way uh, that achieves a, a wide set of results. So this also requires a, a strong mathematical background and also a strong uh, programming uh, background. So uh, the seminar will be taught entirely online and instructions for the first session has already been sent out. Uh, the first uh, session will be uh, thing like will be like in, a, in, a, in an hour from now. Uh, and uh, feel free to check the seminar's website and email us if you have any questions. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Okay, here's another undergrad term uh, course uh, that uh, Sebastian Hack and his team are going to conduct. Yeah, so welcome, everybody. Um, programming 2 is the undergrad introduction to the theory and practice of imperative programming. So our first semester typically covers functional programming. And in the second uh, term, we are looking into imperative programming. And so apart from all the fun programming projects that we have in C and Java for you, we are also looking into object-oriented programming. We are also specifically looking into how imperative languages are Im implemented. So how do they run on um, machines? And we also discuss uh, formal and theoretical properties of them. So semantics, a little bit of verification, and also a little bit of testing will be in the class. All right, thanks, Sebastian. Thorsten, um, you're giving yep. a number of courses. I'm here. Uh, welcome to everybody. Um, yeah, we try to make the best out of uh, the necessity to communicate a lot <laughs> electronically. So we refocus the course audiovisual communication and networks a little bit. It's uh, dependent on the study program, either a core or an advanced lecture, um, four lecture hours to tutorial hours. And we will focus this one on 5G new radio. Um, for this, as my colleague Philip Suzalek already introduced in the beginning, we have purchased an electronic book, so you don't need to go to the library. Every student can access this book uh, since the slides are available. The links that are put on the slide should work. Um, on the book, the only thing that I need to say is to register on this um, account, you need to be in the VPN. So you need to have an, a university account, then you can register. Reading can be done on every machine, but for registering, you need um, a domain uh, from the university. What we will do uh, is each and every week, we will have one uh, double lecture hour that introduces chapters of the book. So that really explains how 5G is working. And one lecture hour that is based on our manuscript that explains to you the theory behind. So why are all these buzzwords true? What is millimeter wave? What is massive MIMO? Um, why does 5G work? And so on and so forth. So hopefully at the end, as the second bullet point says, you'll finally understand how 5G really works. Um, what is also not on the slides, we will, as some colleagues already announced also, we will have a test lecture this Wednesday, um, so in two days, uh, between 12 and 2, um, check it on the website. It has no content yet, so it's not required, but it gives you the possibility that we jointly check all the setups, the access to the book, the access to the manuscript, the access to Teams and Moodle, and so on. Um, Registration runs via our CMS page, so you find all the information um, on the web page of our lab. Um, in case of any questions, just drop me a mail and we'll try to take care individually. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thorsten. All right, Lebenläufige Programmierung, Holger. All right, so this lecture in English is called Concurrent Programming. 
And I'm putting up this slide uh, not only to inform you what I'm doing, but also because it is not a mandatory lecture for every course program. It's optional for some, and uh, for instance, for media, informatics, bioinformatics, and so on. So I thought it's a good idea to advertise it, not only because, it, because it's one of the lectures that has uh, won a couple of awards. So we were, we were uh, awarded three times the Busy Beaver Award from the, from the Fachschaft. We also got a national award from the Fakultät der Informatik for that some years back. What is it about? It's about concurrent programming. And uh, if you want, yes, of course, it's about the virus. It's about uh, simulating how the virus spreads, but you don't have one computer, you have a whole cluster of computers and so on, and you want to make sure that you do this as clever as possible. So it's actually about parallel programming. For this, we study a lot of things. We study theory, we study applications, we have a, we have a project there. And if you mix this all up, and then you try to inject this in your body, then it helps you fight the virus. Um, so for sure, you do not want to miss it. We meet next Monday at, at 2.15 uh, in, in a first online lecture. I uh, already all the course material is up because I have been recording this lecture for a couple of years. So all the lectures are up in German already. So all the content is there. And I will put up new videos that are in English now. So for those that are interested and are not able to of the German language, there will be new shorter videos that uh, capture the essence of all the material in English. All right, next, next slide. Then there is another one. This is a pre-announcement. It is a, a blog course that we're offering in September. It's called Space Informatics. This is about uh, what happens if uh, yeah, computer science goes to space, what problems you find, uh, launch trajectories, um, yeah, like getting a rocket up, but what also what you can do there with satellites, how to schedule things on satellites and so on. And we are giving this lecture for the third time. It will again be a blog course. The details are a bit open because we want to adjust uh, to the situation. Uh, but if you're in interested, you can already, uh, already register now. All right, so the, the third lecture, Zara, you want to talk about this one? Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I am one of the two lecturers of Ethics for Nerds. Um, in a nutshell, the course is about how to not, not mess up. And I don't mean that from a, um, a technical or a computer science perspective, perspective, but more from a ethical and societal perspective. So we do basically three things. First, we look at a bit of philosophy, things that are useful, especially theories about ethics, but also um, stuff on critical thinking. So if you ever wanted to improve your critical thinking skills, then Ethics for Nerds is totally for you. Then we apply all those things to contemporary topics like filter bubbles, echo chambers, machine learning, surveillance, whistleblowing, just everything that you can think of basically, or at least a significant selection of that. And uh, in the very end, we briefly look at sci-fi topics like ma uh, machine intelligence, uh, super intelligence, and um, uh, robot ethics, etc. So we are a Vertiefungsvorlesung, an advanced lecture. However, there's nothing that we really build upon. You have to know a little bit of propositional and first order logic, and that's about it to join the course. Um, we have short videos instead of lectures. Um, we have one exam, and you will be graded for an essay too. We have one assignment in the very end, so you don't have to uh, hand in anything during during the majority of the course, but only one thing in the end. And maybe the most important thing is that it is a self-paced online course. So um, you can do everything in your own time, but that does not mean that you are alone with everything, but there are plenty of opportunities to get feedback from us. We have uh, virtual office hours, we have a forum, and you can hand in voluntary exercises to get feedback on everything. Great, thanks. Oops. Tobias Mönke is offering a course on approximation algorithms. Yeah, hello, I'm Tobias Mönke, and I will give this seminar on advanced topic and topics in approximation algorithms. So this is about algorithms theory, it's a theory lecture. And uh, what it is about is that you have a hard problem, you don't have enough resources to actually solve that problem, how can you still get a very good solution to that? And what uh, so why should you attend this seminar it's about performance guarantees and why is that important so why should you care about performance guarantees because you will have a clean way to really understand the backgrounds of why the algorithm works so it's not about trial and error it's about really understanding why 
And the other reason why you should attend this course is that it's very research oriented. It's very close to research. What we try to do is really to do discussions and to stay as close to what you actually do if you do real research. So what we will talk about are NP-hard problems and we will read up-to-date papers on, on NP-hard problems on approximation of NP-hard problems. So these papers are about modern up-to-date algorithmic techniques. And what we will do is we will actually not read different papers, but we will all read the same papers and there will be weekly discussions. So in these discussions, we will talk about these papers together and we will develop the understanding week by week. So the default is that we do this with Zoom, but I'm open to other solutions so that we have to see what works best. We will use online whiteboards. It's really interactive. It's not a lecture, but it's really everybody talks during these meetings. The requirements that you should actually have to attend the seminar is, well, it's good if you have some basic knowledge in linear programming. And the most important thing is that you should enjoy theory. As I said before, it's a seminar with seven credit points. And yes, if you attend it, there are still a few places available. And if you attend, what I think is that it will be a lot of work, but especially it will be a lot of fun. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Tobias. Optimization, Andreas Karambauer, the stage is yours. Andreas? Hi, yeah, I hope everybody can hear me. Yes. So my name is Andreas Karambauer. I'm a senior researcher at the Max Planck Institute for Informatics. Um, optimization is not only the name of this core course, but it's actually a name of a research area in the intersection of informatics, mathematics, and economics. Um, so this lecture is about uh, not only theoretical computer science, uh, but also has a lot of practical applications. So there are many um, real world problems then can, that can actually be modeled as optimization problems. So whenever there is an alternative, um, um, we would like to choose uh, not just one, but um, possibly the best one. So we have an inherent optimization problem. In this course, you will learn corresponding theory and also um, learn how to apply optimization for uh, problems that appear in practice. So you can find the um, coordinates here with the QR code and this uh, shortified link. If there's a non-zero chance that you um, might attend the lecture, please register to the mailing list um, the link is on the course website. It's non-binding and free of charge. This is the main channel for dissemination, dissemination of information for this course. I hope to see a lot of you there and um, the course will start next Wednesday at two. Thank you, Andreas. Dietrich, Dietrich Klako, are you there? Okay, hi. So. Um, I'm offering two courses this semester. The first one is called Digital Signal Processing. Um, it's talking about a specific selection of advanced signal processing methods. It's techniques for kind of uh, source localization, for noise suppression, and then some, some pre-processing steps that are necessary to kind of detect objects. I'm planning to teach via Zoom if nobody objects. And we are next Monday, that's May 4th at 10.15. And please go to the course homepage and register there. I will then, just prior to the lecture, uh, send you the Zoom link, link. The other course that I'm offering, Jan. Can you please yes. go to the next slide? Yes, I have. It's statistical natural language processing. So it's talking in the first part about um, language modeling on information, um, theoretic concepts of that, and practical aspects of language models. Language models are a key component in basically any system like a speech recognizer, machine translation system, you name it. And in the second half of the lecture, I will talk about specific applications in natural language processing. 
probably not all of the listed topics. We can discuss which are of most interest to you at the moment. My list is bird sensor simulation, information retrieval, named entity recognition, machine uh, translation, just to give examples. Um, this lecture will be very closely um, based on a book with the same title by, uh, written by Manning and Schütze. And I'll be teaching on Fridays from 8.30 to 10 o'clock again via Zoom. And again, if you plan to participate, please go to the course homepage and register such that I can send you the Zoom link. All right, thank you, Dietrich. Now we're uh, yeah, reaching artificial intelligence. Jana Köhler, can you, are you there? Can you present yes. your course? Yeah, hello everybody. Um, Artificial Intelligence is a lecture taught by Jörg Kaufmann and myself. It is a general introduction into the field of AI, its history, key assumptions, paradigms, concepts, and fundamental methods. We learn and apply techniques from a variety of fields. And with this, uh, the knowledge in this course, you have a perfect basis to attend all the many special courses on AI that are offered at the university or to write the bachelor or master thesis in the field of AI. The important information is the link that you can see on the slide. So please go there and register. You find this link also in the um, LSF system. Uh, linked with the lecture description. Um, we have um, online material already there and podcasts and we start on Monday with live lectures through the university uh, team's uh, accounts. And I'm looking forward to see you and uh, we're looking forward to an interesting and exciting semester. Thank you. All right, thank you. So usable computing, Katharina Kompolz, the stage is yours. Oh, hi everyone, Katharina Kompolz, I'm from CISPA and at CISPA we research multiple aspects of IT security and privacy. And who, who of you has already tried to explain to a non-technical person how to encrypt emails or messages? Those of you for sure have seen that this is very often very complicated and it's very hard to convey to users why they have to do certain steps. They don't really understand the security benefits of that. And this um, makes all this matter very, very complicated. And even IT, um, like computer scientists, um, experts, specialists sometimes struggle with implementing crypto related code and don't really understand what's going on in the background. This lecture, which is an advanced lecture, will deal with uh, exactly this subject matter. So we will um, discuss uh, human-centric aspects of IT security. We will have a look at research and design methods that are used in this um, subfield of IT security and privacy. And we will talk about some hot topics in usable security, such as authentication, encryption, and privacy. So um, this course will be taught via live lectures um, on Zoom. Uh, we're starting next week, 4th of May, um, 2020. Um, there will be live lectures. There will be four um, assignments that you have to solve. Uh, we will, of course, also provide Q and A's and um, virtual office hours um, to answer your questions. So what is important to say here is that um, this is a very uh, interdisciplinary lecture. So um, still, I would, uh, expect you to have heard about um, cybersecurity. So cybersecurity one and two um, are requirements. And also uh, you're expected to know a little bit about statistics. If you come from a different field, um, let me know. And I will uh, try to find an arrangement that works for you. As I said, even though we have prerequisites, we try to be open and make full use of the interdisciplinary nature uh, of the subject. I'm looking forward to seeing many of you next Monday at the lecture. Thank you. All right, thanks. Now, Martina Maggio is going to uh, give the course on embedded systems. Martina, what can you tell us about the course? So hello, everyone. Um, embedded system is a core course uh, which goes for nine credits. Uh, it has been given a lot of times before, and it has consisted of both uh, um, aspects of embedded systems, cyber physical systems, and real-time systems. This year in particular, due to the current situation, we will focus more on the intersection between cyber physical and embedded system with a little bit of the real time component. This means that we will look at uh, uh, how to model the physics around uh, 
an embedded device, which could be, for example, a robot that has to navigate an environment. We will look at continuous time model and discrete time models. We will look at uh, the model of computation that is behind this, which, is for, um, which means scheduling. The course will consist of uh, an introductory Zoom lecture, which will be live, and then lectures that are going to be recorded and that you can download and rewatch. Uh, then we will have some exercise sessions that are going to be live. You are going to receive the exercises beforehand. You can complete the exercises, and if you have no questions, you don't need to show up for the Zoom exercise group. But if you have questions, I will be available to answer all your questions, and I will be available for one-to-one -one meetings. Uh, there is a link that you currently see on the screen, so please go to the link and register for the course if you want to attend. Thanks. All right, thanks, Martina. So there is a course on automata and sequences. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Philip. Uh, the course is about automata and sequences. So there are two words here. Uh, by a sequence, I mean like just a recursive sequence, like the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, the second word, automata, is just like finite automata. And I guess the question you might ask yourself is how do these two relate? Well, it's just a very simple example here that uh, imagine you want to compute the number of accepting runs. And uh, this automaton on the right will actually, uh, if you read the letter a to power n, uh, then it will comp the number of accepting runs will be exactly the nth element of the Fibonacci sequence. And I guess like the question you want might want to ask yourself is can you compute, for example, the n factorial sequence like this? And if you're interested in this question and you like uh, automata and algebra, then this is a course for you. All right, thank you. Yeah, so I will also offer one of the basic courses this term, uh, the system architecture course. And uh, in this course, students will learn uh, the fundamentals of computer architecture on the one hand side and operating systems on the other hand side. Right? So two of the low layers of uh, modern systems and um, students will learn a lot in this course. Students will, uh, in addition to just the uh, fundamentals of these systems, they will learn how to build their own uh, complex systems. They will learn to analyze these systems to understand their complexity and also to understand whether they're correct or not. And um, of course, many topics today uh, require some background in how modern computer systems work, in particular, if you think about um, performance, but also if you think about security issues, so if you think about things like Spectre and Meltdown, uh, if you've taken this course, you have a good basis to understand such problems and to work on them. Um, so I'm looking forward to the freshmen that I will be teaching uh, in the summer term. All right, the next course is question answering systems that uh, Rishi Rai is going to present to us. Yeah, hello. Yeah. So my name is uh, Rishi Raj Shaharoy. I'm a senior researcher at the Max Planck Institute for Informatics and this semester, I will deliver an advanced lecture of six credit points on question answering systems. So most of you have used um, an assistant on your mobile phone or home device, such as the Google Assistant or Siri or Cortana or Alexa. And you surely have noticed that if you ask questions like who is the lead actor in Avengers Infinity War or which awards has Messi won or what's the dwarf language in Lord of the Rings, for example. And you will see that now you don't have to um, browse through documents anymore like um, earlier and you get the answer directly, for example, in the school knowledge panel that you see um, on the slides here. So if you want to know more about how this is done, uh, please come to my course. Uh, you will have all the details uh, in the link um, right in the middle here. And those of you who did the IRDM course, Information Retrieval and Data Mining course last semester, you already have um, an idea of what is a, the core of QA systems from the, the last lecture. So, and this is a relatively light course, two hours of lecture a week, and along with um, a, 
written assignments. And in the end, there will be uh, an oral exam and a re-exam. So yes, um, that's it from me and look forward to seeing you all in class. Thank you. Great, thanks. So high-level computer vision is going to be taught by Mario Fritz and Bernd Schiele, who is going to present this course. Yeah, so it's uh, myself, it's Bernd Schiele going to present this. So this course about uh, high-level computer vision, that's actually sort of really trying to, I mean, if you use cameras, trying to understand um, high-level information in images uh, or in video. And what we're doing here is really talking about sort of uh, very advanced, sort of up-to-date, state-of-the-art methods, which are obviously, yes, you might guess, uh, very much depending on um, deep learning methods. So we're going to talk a lot about deep learning, but in particular about sort of applying it to computer vision methods like uh, convolution, uh, convolutional networks, you know, fully convolution networks, sort of all kinds of uh, <clears throat> um, deep uh, learning uh, machine-based methods. So the story is a bit that we're having also uh, hands-on experience, both in programming as well as sort of in mathematical sort of uh, ways of doing things. Um, and this is uh, to, uh, to um, co-teach with Mario Fritz together. You see here the web page. Uh, we'll most likely start with using Zoom, but we might actually move to some uh, other tool like a big blue button or something in, the, in, in uh, somewhere in the middle. But in, anyways, the next, the first lecture going to start May 6th. And if you're interested in the course, please sign up on the web page to the mailing list because that's where we're going to announce how exactly we're going to deliver the course and about all the details of that course. All right, thank you, Bernd. Um, Franco Lachroyer is going to talk, uh, teach the Math for Informatics uh, course. So can you say a few words about your course? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this is a basic course in about mathematics for computer scientists. The language is in German, so Mathematik für Mathematikerin. The topic is linear algebra. And I think this is necessary for all parts of computer science. The course starts ne next week, Wednesday. Please register to be able uh, to get a Zoom uh, connection. And I hope I see you. One thing is special. I will give one of the exercise sessions by myself to be in closer contact with the students. Um, are students going to be randomly distributed to that group, or no, do they have a choice? No, no um, they know which. Um, my, they know the slot of my course. All right. Uh, they can avoid me. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, Raymond Seidel is going to co-teach a course on computational geometry. Raymond, what can you tell us about your course? Yes, hello. So what is computational geometry? Uh, a somewhat facetious way of, of telling what it is is, well, the, you had all those algorithms researchers working on sorting and searching of items with a single key. And at some point, single key got boring. So they introduced the second one. And so now you have two keys. So you have two coordinates. So you have points in the plane and you get new problems and new interesting things for algorithms and so on. So uh, this has so this, this happened 30, 40 years ago, but now this is a, a thriving field uh, where you look at problems with lots of geometric objects as input and you try solving various problems on them. Uh, you need, well, certainly linear algebra while we're at it, but you need geometry, you need, you need interesting algorithmic paradigms, uh, you need uh, combinatorics, uh, and you know, facility with math. Uh, so it should be a fun course. We'll be having uh, two lectures per week. One out of four lectures will actually be a tutorial. Uh, we'll start uh, next Tuesday. And well, visit, visit our website if you want to find out more. Thank you, Raymond. So realistic image synthesis is a lecture given by Philip Slusa, Lech, Karol Miskowski, and Gurpreet Singh. Uh, Philip, are you presenting your course? Yes, I am. So this is Philip Slusa, Lech here. Um, this uh, is the realistic image synthesis course, which, which is a, an advanced lecture um, based off of our computer graphics course that we hold in the 
every winter term. This is a very research oriented uh, course. You see some examples here from papers that we had at SIGGRAPH, which is our main conference. Um, we just had four SIGGRAPH papers in the last year, um, but, and, 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 and others. Uh, most of them really based actually on this course that we're teaching this semester. We'll go into realistic rendering, in particular lighting simulation using Monte Carlo methods, but we'll also look into hardware-based technique, into high dynamic range imaging, into perception issues and sampling issues and various uh, um, related top topics. Uh, the organization is online lectures. Um, we're using Zoom for that. We'll have assignment, uh, assignments and we'll most likely will have an oral exam um, at the end, uh, which uh, if it's uh, in the worst case we can do uh, we can do online. Um, this is really for people who love graphics uh, or graphical representations. Uh, what we are doing here is the fundamental technology that is uh, driving the entire film industry, a lot of the game industry, and as you might know, new GPUs have uh, ray tracing hardware ray tracing support. Uh, now, so a lot of the techniques we're discussing in this course will uh, now be hardware accelerated um, and there will be lots and lots of new uh, capabilities and, and um, things that become possible now. So I think it will be very exciting. Um, the latest paper has all been through people who did uh, their bachelor and master with me. So I think there's a good chance for you to, um, by going through this course, you can contribute there as well. Uh, please sign up at the uh, webpage, uh, uh, which is listed below. If you have any questions, just contact me directly. And I hope I'll see many of you in our course. We'll start Monday to, with the regular hours and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you very much and see you soon. Thank you, Philip. So Gerd Molka is going to present uh, his course on computational logic. Gerd, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Hello to everyone. So the course on computational logic, to the expert, I would say it's about constructive type theory and interactive theorem proving using Cog. To the perspective student, I would say the course is about high level programming. So in computer science, when it gets serious, we are using mathematical models of one kind or another. And what you learn is a programming language in which you can define all kinds of mathematical models, in which you can state properties of the models, and then, and that's the most exciting part, in which you can prove of a stated proposition statement whether it's true or false. Okay, so this is, of course, a concern of logic, but in the course, in the course we will approach it for, from a theoretical side and complement it with a practical side. So from week one on, we will use a programming system called a proof assistant in this case. Uh, it's called Cork. And we will immediately start to define things and state theorems and proof theorems. Okay. So, and as it will turn out, and as you will understand as the course goes on, as a foundation, so there is some found foundational aspect to the course. We do not use set theory, which you would expect if you come from mathematics, but we use type theory, which is in a much better fit with the concerns of programming and we see concerns of mechanical proof checking. So I should add that the reason for programming proofs is that you get the correctness of your proofs checked automatically, fully automatically. Okay. Of course, you need to provide enough details about your proofs. Okay, so uh, we do have a warm up phase. It started last week. So if we have about uh, 60 participants currently, it's open, of course. Yeah. So if you're interested in the course and you are not taking part already, please go to our webpage, register 
and try to participate in the warm-up phase. So there you will learn how to use the proof assistant so that when you, with your first official lecture starts next week, you are well prepared and you can already use the tool and you do have an idea of what is going on. I can say that the course is very well suited for online teaching. We do have uh, extensive lecture notes. The course developed through the last 10 years. It's now the 10th time I, I give it. It changes every year, but we, we have lecture notes. It's very close to a book. I, I want to write about the material. And then, uh, of course, you have the proof assistant. So when you have an idea how to define something, how to state something, how to prove something, you can immediately write it down. It's an interactive system. And then if you do a mistake, in particular in the proof, it will tell you immediately, OK, this is not valid, and you did this wrong or this wrong. OK, and then you can correct. So there is a very immediate feedback loop, loop to the system. OK. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Gert. This brings us to physical layer security by Niels Ole Tippmauer. Niels, yes, are you there? So, yes. 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 Hi, everyone. So this is an advanced lecture um, on security, and in particular on security of physical layers. Um, well, the physical layer aspects of systems. Yeah, we heard earlier about uh, actually several classes related to wireless communications and then also classes related to cyber physical systems so this class essentially looks at physical layer aspects of such systems and security aspects so for example um there's a, I, i'll we'll talk a lot about examples where systems were thought to be secure and then implemented and then after the implementation um one realized that there's a lot of kind of practical attacks that can be done on these systems. For example, via wireless relay of signals that would extend the range of communication. So the, the classic example that I give you on the slide is this relay attack on car keys where you can unlock cars from a greater distance without the, the user interacting. And then regardless of the quality or the, the security properties of the protocol that are being spoken, these attacks will always work and are actually a big practical issue nowadays, how to detect such attacks and how to prevent such attacks. So we'll, this is one part that we're going to talk about. Um, of course, currently there's also a lot of discussion about, for example, and um, wireless contact tracing to detect Corona or COVID-19 infections yeah, to come back to the topic. So there's a lot of kind of physical aspects to this as well to make this secure. So we will likely also discuss this. And as the next aspect of the class, there's essentially the general physical cyber physical systems, for example, industrial control systems, where you have embedded systems that are controlling physical processes that are relying on uh, unauthenticated sensor readings to make control decisions that are somehow using actuators to control these systems. We're going to look at different ways how to attack such systems and how to defend against such systems. And um, yeah, it's, a, it's an advanced lecture, so it's a deep dive. We'll look at research papers where there will be practical exercises where things will be simulated. Um, there's no real hard prerequisites, but it would be good if you would have um, basics in security, for example, SISIG 1 or SISIG 2, or the security um, core lecture. I mentioned wireless a lot. I don't assume that people will have specialized wireless or signals background. There will be some parts of this kind of simplified that uh, I will be teaching in order to, to help you appreciate um, the impact on the security of the systems. Yeah, that's it. Hey, oh. Thank you. Tada, Hillis, what is this? Thank you very much. Yeah. Tada, indeed. Topics and algorithmic data analysis, or everything you wanted to know about machine learning or what you can extract from data, but what no machine learning course actually teaches you. Um, that includes how to get inherently explainable models from your data. For this, you need or a pattern language. You need to be able to express what is going on in your data using patterns. That's what we're going to be discussing. Uh, you want inherently robust models. So you need to be talking about things that are not just statistically robust, but also that can reason in terms of causality. I mean, not just, okay, well, if you don't want to die, get out of the emergency room, 
but actually a machine learning system that can figure out if you are in an uh, emergency room, you're probably not there voluntarily. So, well, let's stay there. And the third major topic we're going to be talking about is uh, how to do this actually on real data. And with real data, I don't mean real data you find in the real world, but I mean data beyond just a table, data that is structured, like in a sequence or in a graph or an attributed graph. All that good stuff we're going to cover, those are the main topics. Uh, we're going to do so with one lecture of two hours per week. Um, and we're going to do this over Zoom. At least that's what we're going to try. Uh, so there's going to be a live lecture. I'm going to record that. I'm also going to put this on YouTube, such that you can afterwards you can screen it. Um, the live lectures will be on Thursdays, 10 to 12. And to avoid some clashes with public holidays, there will be two exceptions on a Tuesday. Um, there is a website, and I kindly ask everybody who's interested in taking the lecture to go to the website, read the small text about how to register for it, such that I can share with you the login details for the Zoom meeting, for the YouTube videos, and for all the reading material. I think that's all there is to it, so looking forward to see many of you next Thursday. Cheers! All right, great. Thanks, Willis. Uwe Waldmann will be teaching automated reasoning too. Uwe, what okay. can you tell us? So uh, this is a live online lecture, which means we meet twice a week on Monday afternoon and Wednesday afternoon via Zoom. So please send me a brief email uh, so that you get the contact data. We will continue what we have done in the winter term, essentially. So we talk, first of all, about decision procedures for equality and for mathematical theories. And then our main topic will be combinations. So we'll talk about how to combine decision procedures or how to combine decision procedures with efficient uh, methods for Boolean reasoning. And we'll talk about how to combine um, the resolution calculus that we've talked about in the last semester with efficient, method, with efficient methods for uh, uh, doing reasoning in quality. Okay, so um, students cannot avoid uh, me in the tutorial because there is only one tutorial and we only got one teaching award, so sorry for that. That's it. Thank you, Uwe. Image processing and computer vision, Joachim. Yeah, hello everybody. My name is Joachim Weikert. I'm heading the mathematical image analysis group. And this semester our group is offering three classes, a seminar and a pro-seminar. I'm not going to talk about the seminar and the pro-seminar because they are fully booked. So let's start um, with two more general things. Uh, first of all, our chair belongs both to the math and the computer science department. As a consequence, you can use our classes either as a computer science class or in case uh, that your uh, minor is mathematics, you can also use it as a math class. Um, you should have a reasonable undergraduate knowledge of mathematics, such as mathematics for computer scientists one, two, three, and then you're basically fine. Um, so what I am offering um, this semester is a core class on image processing and computer vision. This is one of our uh, classical core classes. It has received three teaching awards. And what is it all about? Well, it teaches you everything about image analysis and also a bit of computer vision that everybody should know regardless whether he or she would like to specialize in that topic or not. So we will start with transformations such as Fourier transformation or wavelets which transform an image into representation which can be more useful for further processing. We look into classical features such as edges or corners. Uh, you will learn how to denoise images. You will learn how to remove blur from images. And we will also discuss um, the analysis of videos where we are focusing on uh, extracting motion information from videos. So what you see here in, this, in these pictures is just an example. So you see two frames of a sequence of um, Gary the snail. Gary is moving towards the left corner and on the right hand side you see the motion field color coded and in that class you will learn how to extract for instance motion information from videos. Uh, as an additional benefit, uh, this is also uh, the requirement that able, enables you to write a bachelor thesis in our group. So it's the only requirement that we have. 
uh, programming is done in C. Um, the lecture will be given via the Zoom system and the virtual lectures take place on Tuesday and Friday from 10 to 12. They start on Tuesday in a week from now and below you can find the internet address where you can extract more information. So that's it from my side. I handle over to uh, Pascal Peter who is offering our class on image compression. Yeah, thank you very much, Joachim. Um, this course has only received two teaching awards so far, but still it is very dear to my heart. Um, and uh, it's an advanced class actually, um, so equivalent to four hours lectures and two hours tutorials. Um, even though it is an advanced class, you don't need that many prerequisites. So we will need a large potpourri of different areas of math actually, but it still only requires undergraduate mathematics. So you will get a crash course in everything that you need for the lecture and well, it will be in English. So uh, that is also a given. If you want to know how the lectures are given, um, please visit our website. There are more details on that. So I really tried to um, adapt to the situation as well as possible and uphold my quality standards. So that means you will get pre-recorded lectures as well as lecture notes online. And since communication is key for a good lecture, we will have live discussions. And the first live discussion meeting, even though there is not too much to discuss yet, so it's primarily about organization, will already be on May 4th. Um, about the content of the lecture, well, we have a very wide scope. Um, so half of the lecture will be about a theoretical background, about entropy coding of generic data. And then in the second half of the lecture, we really go into practical stuff that you might use in everyday life. So classic codecs like uh, JPEG, PNG, GIF, you will learn how those work, but you will also learn about the current state of the art. So also exotic new developments like uh, BPG, which is currently the state of the art from video coding for images, uh, cooked down to images, but also so-called in-painting based compression. You see an example of that uh, down below on the slide. Uh, so there you see one original image on the left and in in-painting based compression, you just reduce this to a very small amount of pixels that you store and then you can reconstruct in the decoding again, an image that is very close to the original. And we will also talk about uh, CNN based emerging CNN based end to end coding strategies in this lecture. So um, I would be very happy to have you in the lecture. If you have any questions about the lecture, just follow the link uh, and contact me via the contact information that you find on the web page. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. And uh, Matthias Augustein, Augustein is going to present numerical algorithms for visual computing. Yes, so hi everybody. Um, if you as a student join one of our master programs, you might find that you are lacking some mathematical background. So you, you have your basic math lectures, you have the mathematics that you encounter in the lectures that you are taking, but somewhere in between something is missing, which might be some of the basic numerical algorithms that you do not learn about in those lectures. This is one of those lectures who tries to support you here and offers you some of those backgrounds. So what we are going to talk about in this lecture can basically be split up in two different parts. The first one is concerned with systems of linear equations and how to solve them, in particular with iterative solvers. And the second part is uh, closer to visual computing. Many problems that we encounter here can be solved by methods formulated, well, for example, as diffusion processes and the language that is used in order to talk about those things are so-called partial differential equations. So that's more on the theoretical side, but somehow you have to solve those things. And in order to do this, what we use primarily are so-called finite difference methods. And that's what the second part of this course is about. As I already mentioned that it's meant for master students. So it's an advanced class um, with 
which will also have some assignments. Um, most of it will be taught online. I already have uh, lecture notes online. So if you follow the link given here, you will find some information how to register for this course. And if you do so, you will get all the login information that you need to join us. So course starts next week on Tuesday and I hope I see many of you there. Thank you. Hey, Christoph Weidenbach. I think you're the one presenting competitive programming, is it? Yep, I will do that. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, cool. Okay, so this is competitive programming and competitive programming is about uh, competitive programming. That means we try to teach you uh, to be successful in competitive programming, which can mean both uh, compet competitions for students like the ACM, the former ACM competition, but also competitions you may en envisage later on when you are a researcher and you compete with others with respect to your systems. So uh, we have a lot of lecturers, instructors, so they are pre-professors and the rest of the people knows by heart what is going on here. And uh, yeah, we have a weekly lecture and I, I should say it will be a tough lecture, right? So the prerequisites are on the other hand, on one side low because you don't need to know much about algorithms or what is an advantage if you already know. But of course you have to have, have really profound uh, knowledge in, in programming. Profound means you should be able to write something like 100 lines of code without a syntax error. It means you should write, be able to write simple algorithms like sorting or things like that without uh, any bug, introducing any bug, right? And uh, if you program, it should not be necessary for you to look into a manual. Okay, so we will have every week a lecture that introduces some algorithms, programming paradigm concept. Then you will have an exercise, which means you have to solve a problem, write a program. And then what is really different to, to other lectures maybe is you will submit your program to what is called a judge. It will automatically be compiled. It will be tested on a, on a certain test bed and your answers have to be both correct and your program have to be efficient enough to, to really solve all test cases. Right, so we will start uh, next week, right? Uh, there, is a, there is a website where you can find all the information and uh, yeah, let's see. All right, Christoph, thank you. So this concludes the presentation of the courses for the summer term. And um, I would like to, uh, well, wish you a great semester, enjoy your studies. Uh, virtually at Saarland Informatics Campus and at Saarland University. And of course, uh, stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.